Hi witches! So yes, so once again we are in a different location because they are ripping up the street in front of my apartment and it's super loud. People are like honking and being angry so we're gonna just hang out in here for this week. I hope that's okay. Um, to start off the video today I really just want to shout out to some patrons who joined my Patreon so thank you so much. Um, so I want to shout out Bird Honey, Tabitha, Belle, Victoria, and Jocelyn. Thank you guys so much for supporting my Patreon. I just like I am always like astonished when people join because I'm just like, are you like, really? Oh my gosh. So thank you seriously so much. Um, Patreon helps me like do this and like have this be my job. Um, and that is like the most rewarding thing in the world to me. So thank you for helping me like chase my dreams. I really appreciate it. Now for today, we're kind of finishing up some of this witchcraft 101 topic. Um, and I wanted to um, really just take time to address the entirety of the lunar cycle because it's something that I really like to talk about. Um, I did a whole month of like lunar cycle videos last year. So if you guys are interested interested in a more in-depth look into that, definitely check it out. Um, I think it was like around this time last year actually. Um, so I super recommend that. Um, but today I just am going to go into a brief overview of the lunar cycle to hopefully like demystify it a little bit, um, similar to how we did the wheel of the year. Um, and just kind of give you guys like a good intro um, so that way you have a place to jump off from. So without further ado, let's start the lunar cycle. The first phase in the lunar cycle is the new moon. The new moon is something that we observe when there actually doesn't look like there's a moon in the sky at all. It is completely dark um, and this is a time that is really associated energetically with new beginnings. It's a, kind of seen as like an energetic clean slate so you can um, implement new things, break old habits. Um, this is also the time where I tend to cleanse my house on a very deep level. Um, some people choose to do that during the full moon. I do it both times but um, definitely the new moon is like when I am like scrubbing and like really getting in with like the vacuum and getting all the corners and stuff. There's just something about that energy, that clean slate that makes me want to have a clean space too. So um, that's kind of like a personal practice. Um, this is also a really great time to be setting your intentions. So the idea of the way the lunar cycle works in witchcraft um, is is that it is a system that some witches use to kind of track their progress in their spell work and their personal journeys, whatever that they may be focusing on in that time. So um, generally speaking, the new moon is seen as a time where you are setting those intentions. You are deciding what you're going to focus on for the month ahead and you're kind of committing to that. So um, if, if we're taking a look at the lunar cycle almost as if it is like superimposed over the wheel of the year, so I think I talked about that in the last video, um, I, I really associate this phase of the moon with the holiday Yule. It is a time of both stillness and like rest that kind of like um final like inhale that final deep breath before you start working so it's kind of like that time to you know pause reflect rest but also it's a time of like rebirth and transformation if you're watching this on wednesday the new moon was yesterday which is a-okay you can celebrate the phase of the moon the day of um excuse me the day before the day of and the day after so you can definitely still set some intentions for today um but moving forward we are going to be moving um on to the waxing crescent phase of the moon. Um, so when we see this phase of the moon, it just looks like a little tiny sliver, like a really tiny crescent. Um, this moon is tied to the energies of taking those first steps of organization and beginning to set routines. Um, it's all about prepping for success, creating affirmations and defining those practices, maybe getting a list together of ingredients for any spell work that you might want to do in the month ahead, um, stuff like that. So I, I really associate personally this phase of the moon with the holiday inbox. So it's kind of that preparation um, that is really a time where we are cleansing our spaces, where we are getting things ready for like the abundance of the year ahead. Um, and just setting ourselves up for success. So if that is something that helps you kind of stay on track, um, aligning with that waxing crescent is really just great for like, you know, getting a planner out or making sure that um, you're looking at the month ahead um, for any sort of like holidays or writing down the dates of certain um, significant celestial events, whatever that might look like in your practice. Waxing crescent, super good for that. Moving forward, we have the first quarter moon. Now this looks like a half moon, so half of the moon is illuminated. Um, and this is a period of time in the lunar cycle, which I, this is 
part of my personal practice if this doesn't work for you totally cool this is the time that I generally like take a step back and check in with myself um, this is all this time of the lunar cycle is all about taking decisive action gaining energy moving forward expansion growth and first successes so I think it's really good to kind of like level with yourself and just be like okay is this like where I want to be at this point in the month when it comes to like planning spell work or working towards my goals like what do I need to fix um, in in the next week or so before I get to the full moon in order to make my spell work as successful as possible so this this phase of the moon is again kind of all about that expansion it's you are gathering energy and starting to um, really put your will into action so we talked about magic being um, you know willpower to move forward on your path um, so it's all about that I really like doing energetic workings that are focused on the elements of air and fire around the waxing phase of the moon during the waning phase, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. I tend to focus on the elements of earth and water, which are a little bit more receptive, um, whereas air and fire are a little bit more expansive. Um, and personally, I associate the first quarter moon with like Ostara um, and that sort of energy. So it's kind of the first sprouts, that finding of balance um, before moving forward. Next, we have the waxing gibbous, which follows the first quarter moon. Um, and this is when the moon is like more than halfway full to almost full, right? We are powering through, pushing to the finish line, tying up loose ends when it comes to achieving our goals or working on spell work. It's also a time to be recognizing your achievements as they become evident, because around this time, your spell work might start manifesting already. Um, you might start to see actual change happening because of the actions that you've taken, whether that is mundane action or magical action. Um, and honestly, during this phase of the moon, I tend to focus more on mundane action over metaphysical. Like I'm really just like putting in the hard work to um, manifest whatever intentions that I set during the new moon during the upcoming full moon, if that makes sense. Um, and the waxing gibbous, I really associate this uh, with the holiday Beltane on the wheel of the year. So it has a very similar, uh, very like potent, very like um, vibrant energy to it. I hope that makes sense. Now, finally, we have made it all the way to the full moon. And that is when, of course, our beautiful lady moon is completely illuminated. Um, this is a celebration of the ultimate flow of energy through the universe. It is a total manifestation of your goals, um, which means that like you are kind of standing and appreciating all of that power and all of that energy that you put into making change for yourself. And that is absolutely something that should be celebrated. Um, this is a time of very high energy. Um, some people kind of get overwhelmed around the full moon or you might notice like people acting a little bit strange. I think like the most famous example of this is like the emergency room on a full moon. I've heard from like multiple nurses is always just like a nightmare so more power to you I appreciate all that you do for us like I really do like nurses are awesome um but it is also really a good time to again cleanse to charge any tools or any um you know items that you might want to use in future spell work over the next like lunar cycle um and to add any extra oomph to spell work that you have been planning on doing so if you really wanted to do like a very specific working and you wanted the best chance of like success and like power and efficacy um doing it during a full moon is probably going to be your best bet i love practicing during full moons almost as much as i like practicing during new moons um so if you are looking for maybe a special um, like celestial event, maybe planning on doing a working during the full moon will work for you. Um, and in terms of like lining everything up with the energy of the wheel of the year that we talked about previously, um, I associate this phase with Letha, the summer solstice that we just celebrated. So it's just like this really high energy, very expansive time in the universe um, and the, the stars above, yes. <laughs> so following the full moon, we have the waning gibbous and the moon is still pretty full, right? Right? it's like mostly full but we use this time um you know to still carry on that celebration carry on that vibrant energy but we do recognize that it is fading and we need to start looking ahead to the next month and see what goals we need to set what sort of spell work we're kind of like being drawn to do and what we need to do to further our paths right um so at this point in the lunar cycle, this is a time where witches often look inwards and evaluate like what we did well. So yay, praise, praise yourself. Like, yes, please acknowledge your accomplishments. Um, but also um, what needs improvement. So, you know, we can't all be perfect all the time. Perfect doesn't exist, even though my Virgo brain likes to tell me that I need to do that. 
So for example, if you really were dedicated to like practicing on a daily basis and you missed a couple days, maybe focusing on like why you missed those couple days and what you can do to make uh, your daily practice a little bit more easy to incorporate into your um, like daily routine. And that way it's like a sustainable holistic strategy, right? Um, so no shame in having to admit like, hey, this didn't work out for me. Let me figure out how I can make it fit. It's kind of the point of following the lunar cycle and using it to further your spiritual practice, right? Um, this is also time to begin to rest and allow ourselves to slow down, uh, to begin reaping the rewards of all of the hard work that we did um, and focusing on the workings having to do with like healing, introspection, um, as well as like starting to think about the things that you would like to do in the future, like I said. Um, I really associate this phase of the lunar cycle with the wheel of the year holiday, uh, Lunasa. Um, so yes, uh, it's kind of like the first harvest festival. We'll talk about it a little bit more in August. Don't worry about it. Um, next we have the third quarter moon. So we are back to that half moon in the sky, um, but it's on the opposite side. And during this phase, we are generally checking in with our emotions, reconnecting with our intuition, finding that sense of balance again before we are starting that um, cycle of work and expansion. Um, again, this is a time where I really focus on connecting with that element of water and that element of earth. They're both very receptive and good for kind of pouring out emotions. Um, I, I, again, find this a great time to honor and to nurture your emotions. And also it's a good time to focus on shadow work. So if you're going to do it, I recommend focusing on shadow work during kind of the waning part of the lunar cycle, if that is something that, you know, resonates with you. Um, and it's just kind of a good time to begin to think on the things that you would like to achieve again during the, the next lunar cycle. So um, it's, it's all about kind of coming together, finding that rest, finding that balance. Um, and as such, I really associate this phase of the moon with the wheel of the year holiday Mabon, um, which is a celebration of the fall equinox and finding that balance again. So you guys can kind of see how they go hand in hand, which I think is interesting and neat to point out. So I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> okay. And the final phase of the moon that I wanted to talk about with you guys today is the waning crescent. So again, we are back to that small sliver of the moon. It's about to be the dark, you know, darkness of the new moon again. Um, and this is kind of like our final rest uh, before we begin our labor again. So releasing anything that no longer serves us. We are cleansing and preparing the home once again. Um, maybe this is just me. I kind of have a very big focus on the my home as um, it's very just central to my practice. So I do spend a lot of my time like warding, cleansing and preparing it. Um, so if that doesn't resonate with you, totally cool. Um, but generally speaking, during this waning crescent, I feel like there is just such a major focus on rest and recuperation that, um, you know, I, I tend not to even do a lot of spell work during this phase of the moon. It's mostly, again, mundane action and just preparing myself, resting and, you know, reconnecting with my community. I know for myself, at least, um, I definitely feel less energetic during the um, waning crescent. And I have learned to kind of take that as a cue to chill out for a little bit. So um, I associate finally <laughs> this phase of the moon with the holiday Samhain, um, which is in October or otherwise known as Halloween. But we'll talk about that because I love that holiday. So um, that is my quick rundown of the lunar cycle. I know that was super fast. I do have some other resources available. So feel free to check those out and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.